everybody. So today we are going to be talking about what is actually an implementation detail and what is a detail that it is crucial for you to actually talk about during the strategy, architecture, and resource planning phases of your tech project. So today we are going to be talking about this from a data product perspective. In my experience, implementation details are often confused in these types of, of projects because the data itself, the way the data is put together and ETL'd and how you do the analysis on the data is the actual product. It is still concerning that I very often hear others at other companies, other consultants, other engineers that I talk to saying this phrase as if it's like, eh, it's just an implementation detail. It can be costly. So just watch out for that. So I will be sharing uh, an experience I had on an IoT project um, years ago where I was consulting. And as a consultant, you know that you don't really have a lot of say in what the core company actually does. So I will share with you uh, my cautionary tale uh, where an implementation detail for a data product was not discussed and it ended up costing this company uh, millions of dollars and at least an additional year's worth of development just to get around the problem that may have been able to be discussed and calibrated and accounted for much earlier on. All right, so let's go into what is an implementation detail. So an implementation detail is usually something that happens at the actual development stage. Now I'll put up on the screen over here the five steps that I use when I am actually going through implementing a tech solution. And the actual development happens very late in, in that cycle. Implementation details are essentially things that could be decided without a lot of buy-in. It's something like you've heard the saying, there are many ways to skin a cat. So there are many ways to solve a problem. And if this problem can be solved with one way or another way, and they're equally valid, that's an implementation detail. That's something that the developers are constantly doing when they are actually putting things together to get it out the door. Now, the reason that these steps are so important is because steps one through three really dictate how the final two steps are actually going to come about. Those two steps have the most implementation details in them. So if you don't do the strategy well, you don't lay the KPIs out correctly or what the problem you're trying to solve is, if you don't talk to your architects about the real problems and the solutions to that data product, that is the cautionary tale I will tell you, then you could have some real issues when you get into the development stage. Same with resources. If you're not actually looking at the resources with some of the implementation in mind, when the actual details of that implementation come about, developers are not really going to have a lot of guidance on what they should or should not do. They don't have any idea what the real strategy is, what the real problem is, what kind of uh, data solution is really being sought. So when you're developing data products, knowing what is and is not an implementation de detail is crucial. So let's go through these five steps. So the first step is strategy. When you're going through and you're creating a data product, oftentimes the strategy is understanding what is your unique data set or what unique structure or what unique insights you are going to be producing. All of those things oftentimes are connected to schema, different types of database, different types of algorithms, uh, ways of gathering data or um, making sure that data is coming from unique sources. Those are things that in traditional projects could be an implementation detail, but in a data product, it is very much part of your strategy. <laughs> All right. So another aspect here is the architectural. This one, this is where, where it, it, it sometimes gets a little tricky. So in my cautionary tale, uh, there was an engineer that we were working with that 
uh, we had mentioned building out this IoT solution. That's what it was. It was an IoT data source uh, that was going to have real-time data that could be given to analytics to understand traffic safety. That was the that was the use case. So timeliness might be a consideration that is important, right? So that's where all that strategy comes into play. Is it time? Is it how we're, what kind of data we're looking at? In this case, it was time and insights that we were really focusing on from the strategy. So when we got to the architectural stage, this is where we started to say what strategies, what kind of technology supports that timeliness and the insights that we are trying to gather, right? And so one of the things that myself and another consultant had suggested was using linked data principles, right? So using graph technology. So one of the things that we didn't realize, so this is separate from in, uh, implementation details, is when we said, well, let's use some linked data principles because we were already trying to get data from uh, sources that were free and open and they were all using linked data. The engineer did not clarify what linked data was. He assumed that linked data meant linking, as in hyperlinks, but that's it's not really the same thing, especially when you're dealing with a data product. So always ask. Don't be too proud or too scared to ask. <laughs> so at the time, um, we had suggested using linked data. They decided not to. In fact, they decided <clears throat> to use a legacy system. Part of this architectural build out is understanding build, borrow, and buy. So if you're building it all, it's usually not from scratch. You're using some kind of legacy data or some kind of legacy systems. If you've already decided and, and figured out the market need for a data product, most likely you have the data somewhere or you at least understand where to get it and how to synthesize it and all of that. Uh, so unfortunately, the decision was made to use a legacy system that did not do relationships very well. But it was said that understanding the role of linked data, understanding how IDs, i.e. the URI, um, was going to interact with this system was considered an implementation detail. In a data product where IDs are probably your, your key value, don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. Uh, so this is where the trick to understanding what is an implementation detail. You have to understand with a data product, what are the key pieces of information? What are the key aspects of the technology that are going to produce the data to produce the actual product that you are trying to, to sell or to, to use with others and make an offering? That is what you should focus on and make sure that anything that falls into those aspects are never tagged as an implementation detail. Because if you leave something that crucial on the table and not discussed, and you leave it up to developers down the line that do not know the strategy, that do not know why these things are important. Remember, because at the architectural stage, which is only stage two now, that wasn't fleshed out then the developers down the line are not going to understand why certain things are important and they're just going to do, and this is logical, what makes sense and what is easiest for them. But that does not mean it connects back to the strategy. That's why this is so important. Now, the next phase is looking at the resources. This goes back into a little bit more of that build, borrow, buy. So borrowing and buy, really, it, it can be determined in the architectural stage because you understand if you have enough um, at your disposal or the budget at your disposal to, to actually do something. Um, but when you get to the resources, that's where you understand you have the actual people to do that. So you might have had the technology from the architectural stage, but do you have the people and the skills and are they available when you need them for this project? So that's the resources build out. If you're borrowing or you're buying, that's where you have to start to do some of the, the POC, really understand the technology that's out there. But if you've made mistakes at the strategy and architecture level on what is an implementation detail and what is not, if you haven't clearly defined what those the key pieces of this, this data product are, how are you supposed to help 
the folks looking at the, the vendors and looking at the different solutions out on the market? How are they supposed to determine what's going to work for your use case? Again, they're going to treat some of the core data, if you haven't described what it is, as an implementation detail. So they will take liberties and they will design what fits best for the acceptance criteria that has been outlined. So part of the core processes should be outlined in those KPIs. And then we get to the last two sections where implementation details run rampant, and rightly so. But if you haven't planned and outlined clearly what the key pieces of the technology for and, and what are the key data points and what are the key insights when you're going through all of the steps before this, the developers are lost. I mean, they're going to do the best they can. They're wonderful. They're doing what they do best. But what they, they, they need is guidance. <laughs> they need a reference architecture even from the architecture level. If, if the way that you are actually building this out has to be really effective and it has to you know meet a certain performance, those things can be laid out at that architectural stage. But if they're not, then the developer is hopefully going to go out and look for some baseline information, try to reach out and find out what um, information is already out there that they can use on the web to kind of determine what is the best course of action for something. But do you really want to take that much chance? Do you really want to put them in that kind of situation? Probably not. So the moral of this story is with the project that I had been working on, the uh, implementation detail of linked data was lost. And because of that, they were using IDs that were not unique. And what happened was they were aggregating all of the data in and a lot of the IDs were the same as they were coming in from different data sources. So as things were coming in, they were overwriting each other. <laughs> and because of this horrendous problem, they literally lost almost the entire first six months of work because they didn't catch it in time. And so this actually put the project back an entire year because not only did they have to go back and redo all the work that they had done for the first six months, but then they had to go back to that architectural stage and say, well, the IDs are kind of important in this. We do need to understand, is it virtualization or is it actually bringing in the data and having to ETL it and put it into a data warehouse? That's the second piece of this that we were learning is it wasn't only linked data was deemed um, an implementation detail. It was how much time is it going to take to virtualize and just grab something with an API if you're using you know, linked data principles, graph principles, uh, data mesh principles. Or uh, are you going to pick everything up, bring it down, you know, maintain it? So um, that ended up increasing the time to market by an entire day. And you might not think that sounds a like a lot, but for a data product that was meant to be fast for the uh, safety of autonomous vehicles, it wasn't good. And that's why it went over an entire year more than it was supposed to. All right, so I hope this has helped you understand how to identify what is an implementation detail and what isn't. Constantly be asking yourself this because if you miss something and if you hear anyone say, oh, it's an implementation detail, challenge that. Ask yourself, is it really? Because if not, you could have some drastic mistakes. Now, thankfully, I have not had any problems to that magnitude since that project. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this has helped you. With that, I need to go find some air conditioning. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this. I wanna thank you very much for watching the video. Catch you next time.